Epic and issue boards are a great way of managing your lower and higher level workflows. Once we've defined our business scope, know what we need to do for the one data launch, and created our different epics and subgroups of projects, what do you do next? Now we have to start thinking about how we might want to plan and manage these going forward. So there's two different kinds of boards within GitLab. There's an epic board, and you can have as many boards as you want at a group level. Here's a board showing different feature level epics, broken down by component, which is one of those scope labels we set. You can visualize progress directly here as well. You have visibility into the scope that is going into your overall system or value stream. Additionally, we see this team has created a board that has a light workflow board just for capabilities. So as we create new capabilities, we want to break them down. You can actually move your epics through their own workflow independent of the issues. This is a great way for product managers or executives to manage the workflows for their higher level work. Additionally, they've created a board that has lists based on the different types or different levels of work items. So if you want to visualize it that way, you can view it in this board view. This board is being utilized with lists for each of the squads. So you can see which squad is working on which feature, and we can also see the completion progress. So this is one view that you can use to slice and dice your epics, and you visualize them in different ways based on how you set up your label taxonomy. Boards can be filtered with an epic board by label or author. Then you can also set a permanent scope if you want, so in this case, we scoped this board to feature because squads are features in the system. Now, when it comes down to team planning, typically you set up a board based on iterations. So it has lists for each iteration. As you can see, here are upcoming iterations. One's in progress right now. And in this board view, it's also great to filter by Epic. So what's nice about this is that issues have something called dependencies so you can create a blocking or block by issue. If you look at the detailed view for this, you can see right now it's linked to another issue. It's actually in a different team, and it's blocked until that team completes things. So within the board view, we can see that this implementation and endpoint is blocked by the post settings issue right here. You can intentionally sequence out these other issues that are pinned onto this one into the follow-on iteration. That way, we don't get bottlenecked having to leave an issue standing at the end of the iteration. This is another great view for teams, how they can schedule their issues out into coming iterations. Here's an example of a team board that has a list for each of the team members to see all the issues that they're currently working on. Based on your label taxonomy, you can see the status of where they're at. You can see if they're blocked and see the weight. It gives you a great view in case you want to limit the number of issues that any team member has. You can also set work in progress limits on each issue. Let's say that a team member is only supposed to be working on two at the same time. You can go ahead and do that, and you'll notice it automatically flags this as red. So this is a great way to see and manage team member overload. It's a great signal for the team themselves that they might have too many issues assigned. The last board at this level is the build track which has been scoped to the current iteration and means that it's only going to show issues that are an iteration that's currently active. This is what the team is going to look at most frequently. As a project manager, you are probably going to look at the iteration planning and the release planning and maybe even team boards, but the team simply needs to know what they need to work on next. So this is the board that they can come to and then typically pulled from the top of the list. Let's say we want to do the post first because we know it's blocking some other issues and you can pick that up, move it in progress. Then as they're working on things, they can move it to the different cycles. You can either update by dragging and dropping or if you're on the issue detail itself and it's ready to move into review, you can add the label from the sidebar, put it in the review. Then when you go back to the board, refresh it and you'll see that it's now in the review state. No matter where you edit the issue, it's going to be reflected on the board itself because this is a way to slice and dice your issues. It's super helpful. 
You can also group by epic within this. A lot of these things were created in top level Awesome Co. But if you want your team to have their own views into their own things, we can go into this consumer products group. We can also view my epics or view my roadmap. I can see just those roadmap items, which are within the consumer products group itself. So we don't see the noise of everything else. We can just see your work. This is where it's great for a product owner, maybe a product manager at the higher level. It's great to have these different ways and options for how you roll out your work, depending on where you create it. At this level, you can also create issue boards just like you did at the higher level group. Let's say you create an iteration board. We can pick the current iteration that's going on right now. We can also see a list of the issues within this specific squad that's responsible for delivering all these issues. These are all the helpful options that you have when moving forward with agile project management in GitLab. Whoa.